So before we had Dragon Ball Xenoverse and before we had Dragon Ball Fighters, there was a game that so many of us grew up with back in the day, and it was called Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkaichi. It was one of the most revolutionary fighting games of all time for Dragon Ball Z fans. It brought about great storylines, characters, gameplay, and it mixed it all up together in just this perfect serenade of Dragon Ball Z fan hype. And now, at this point, we have confirmed a brand new Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkaichi game announced. This was announced recently at the Dragon Ball Z Worlds, it was something like that, there was like a tournament going on, whatever the case is, I don't really care about that, what I do care about is that Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkaichi is back, and it looks like it's going to be better than ever, and no, not a remaster, not a re-release, not a re-whatever, reimagining. it is a brand new game, officially, and this just kind of came out of nowhere, Nobody expected Dragon Ball Z Budokai to come back, considering that Dragon Ball Xenoverse and Dragon Ball Kakura and Dragon Ball Fighters, all of these games has essentially done better for the most part. Well, I don't know about Dragon Ball Z Kakura, but pretty much everything else has done better when it comes to Xenoverse, all those DLC packs that we'd get over and over and over, Xenoverse 1, Xenoverse 2. Obviously, we know the pedigree that Dragon Ball Fighters has had with Bandai Namco and the sales there. That game did so well they actually invested in rollback netcode after launch years after launch that like never happens you do not see that because it's incredibly difficult and also expensive to overhaul the type of online system that it does use but they did that as well but i think that bandai namco and the fans and everybody knows that it is time it is time for a new Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkaichi. It is time to give the fans what they've been asking for for so many years. Now, I've been off the Dragon Ball Z train when it comes to video games. I've just been off of it. I have all the games. I have Xenoverse. I have Fighters. I have all those. But I'm telling you right now, maybe Budokai Tenkaichi wasn't as good as some of the new stuff out there. But it was the style. It was the substance. And it was how Budokai Tenkaichi did it with its gameplay that truly impressed gamers all the way back then in the early 2000s, mid 2000s. I remember playing Budokai Tenkaichi 3, I think for like seven or eight hours straight until I fell asleep back in like the mid 2000s. It was crazy to see the hype and the gameplay and what that did back then on those systems. I think I played it on the PS2 quite a bit, so it was incredible. So to my delight, Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkaichi is finally coming back. They did not announce platforms, they did not announce release date, they didn't announce anything else when it comes to the official title, nothing else was announced, they just said it's coming back and obviously it's going to have a lot of the new characters from Dragon Ball Super, the new transformations and all of that, so I'm very excited to see where this goes. And one thing about Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkaichi, guys, is that it blurred the line or kind of blended it between the arena fighter that people are kind of getting tired of and with and also Dragon Ball Fighters. Now, yes, it's not quite up to that level competitively, but it kind of blended the line between that. So if you have the people that like the more arcadey arena style, also you want a little bit more strategy when it comes down to it, Budokai Tenkaichi kind of fit that bill. I thought that it was pretty good in that. Now, obviously, it wasn't up to the level of what Dragon Ball Fighters was, but I just felt like there was some really good things in Budokai Tenkaichi, and I was sad to see it go, but it is back, and it looks like it might be better than ever. I'm hoping that we get a release of later in the year or early next year. This could even be a Nintendo Switch 2 title. I mean, who knows with that? I think that Bandai Namco is going to make sure they don't miss out on that Nintendo platform like they did with the original Nintendo Switch, at least initially. Make sure they support that because their games have done incredibly well on Nintendo platforms. So we'll see what happens going forward in the future, but I would guess it would be on PS5, Xbox. I'm excited. I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be lit and a lot of fun. But 
Speaking of lit and a lot of fun, Model is Soft, they're known for making games that fit those categories. Like I stated before, they are primed, gearing up, and getting ready for the next gen of Nintendo. But we need to make sure that we look and we acknowledge the facts when it comes to what's going down. Model is Soft has a big recruiting going down. Yes, big recruiting. On Twitter, they actually talked about it a little bit. Also, with some custom artwork of Xenoblade Chronicles 3 with some nods to previous Xenoblade games. Maybe you guys can actually point it out here in the picture. So on Twitter, they said it, recruitment information, recruitment guidelines for new graduates, 2024 graduates have been released. We look forward to receiving your application. So they are hiring, they are locking in, they are gearing up for that next big game that they've been working on. And a lot of you guys have been wondering what it's going to be. I've made countless videos on what Monolith Soft is going to do next. Do we get that Xenoblade Chronicles X Nintendo Switch or Nintendo Switch 2 port or both? Do we get a brand new IP? Is it a combination of the two? And I think that's where they're going with. I do think that Monolith Soft is trying to gear up to bring a modern version of Xenoblade Chronicles X to the Nintendo Switch platform or to the Nintendo Switch 2. And I also think they are gearing up for that new fantasy IP they've been working on for quite some time. I think that they might be in the home stretch of those and probably waiting for the announcement of the next system. It might already be pretty much done. I mean, we saw what happened with Xenoblade Chronicles 3. That game was essentially done to the point to where they they moved it up a number of months to swap it with Splatoon because they said, you know what? Probably not a good idea if we release it after Splatoon. That game's going to be massive when it comes to the pre-order sales numbers and all that. So let's release it before and let's get it out at the beginning-ish of summer so people can play it then. Very good move. Xenoblade Chronicles 3 pretty much at 2 million units at this point. But yeah, they're gearing up. They're getting ready. I think Model Soft is going to have some very exciting information for us soon. And if you remember, Model Soft has been one of those developers at least with the nintendo switch they've supported it at launch or in that first year remember xenoblade chronicles 2 was announced during nintendo's january presentation so it was one of the first batch of nintendo switch games to be announced because it's xenoblade and it's model soft they're one of nintendo's most impressive developers when it comes down to it and developing the xenoblade ip and model soft's catalog has been big in the switch generation and the games have sold extremely well it's been profitable for nintendo so i do think that we are going to see that next game and maybe it is a launch window or first calendar year type of game for the Nintendo Switch 2, but we're gonna have to wait and see on that. But let's talk about what's going on right now with Nintendo platforms, with the Nintendo Switch. Yes, one of the greatest games of all time. Game Boy Advance, Nintendo Switch Online adds Metroid Fusion. I wanted to talk about this because I think that it's awesome that we're finally going to get some really good GBA games. Like GBA was something that people have wanted on the platform and now it's starting to kind of really kind of come through at this point which is just great to see so game boy advance nintendo switch online metroid march 8th now here's a little bit more details now a lot of you guys might have not played this game but this game almost feels like a metroid dread light in some type of ways especially with what happens in the game with its arrival you'll be able to experience samus aaron's full journey across the 2d metroid series on nintendo switch beginning with the original metroid game on the nes Nintendo Switch Online Library through her most recent mission on Nintendo Switch and Metroid Dread. In Metroid Fusion, interstellar bounty hunter Samus Aran is attacked by X Parasite. While exploring the mysterious planet SR388, this organism is not only deadly, but can mimic the abilities of any creature it infects, including Samus herself. Saved from the brink, thanks to the infusion of Metroid DNA, the X Parasite's only natural predator, she soon discovers that the parasite has spread to the research station, orbiting SR388. Weakened and out of options, Samus must do whatever it takes to destroy the X threat before it's too late. Embark on this critical mission alongside Samus and experience the classic Metroid gameplay while exploring a massive research station, teeming with hostile life forms, collect power ups, including favorites like Morph Ball and the Screw Attack uncover a multitude of secrets and experience the adventure that links super metroid to metroid dread which a lot of you guys played metroid dread and if you haven't played this one you gotta have that link it really is important but be wary because this dreadful sax 
an unstoppable ex-parasite mimicking Samus is on the loose, and it's coming for you. Oh, that's where, like, the dread part comes in, right, with the Emmys? Now, once Metroid Fusion arrives, if you want to enjoy the main Metroid series in order, you can play Metroid on the NES, Nintendo Switch Online Library, Metroid 2, Return to Samus on the Game Boy, Nintendo Switch Online Library, Super Metroid on the Super NES, Nintendo Switch Online Library, Metroid Fusion, and then conclude with the latest installment on the Nintendo Switch Metroid Dread. Plus, if you're interpret Bounty Hunter, you can branch out and play the Metroid Prime Remastered game, which is available now. So we know exactly what Nintendo's doing. Nintendo is trying their hardest to get people ready for Metroid Prime 4. It is undeniable at this point because that was all a press release. They put in all that stuff there. They have the website that we talked about a bit back. Nintendo wants to get you ready, get you familiar, and get more people into the Metroid franchise. And it is working because Metroid Prime Remastered is still the number one game sold on the Nintendo Switch eShop. I think also mainly because people can't find as many copies out there when it comes to physical, but those are coming. They're getting restocked, so don't worry about that, guys. But yes, this is gearing up, in my opinion, for a Metroid Prime 4 release this year. But we're going to have to wait and see on that. But you know what else is coming out this year? Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Booster Course Pass Wave 4. Not even just this year, this week, actually. So Nintendo released the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Booster Course Pack Wave 4 on March 9th, the company has announced. Now, Wave 4 is featuring a lot of different stuff. You got the Fruit Cup, the Boomerang Cup, which adds eight courses, including from the Wii, Game Boy Advance, Nintendo DS, Nintendo GameCube, and Mario Kart Tour games. Each course can be played locally or online. Cups are divided as follows. You got the Fruit Cup, Tour Amsterdam Drift. You have the GBA Riverside Park, Wii DK Summit, which that is an awesome course. Yoshi's Island as well. And then the Boomerang Cup, you have the Tour Bangkok Rush, DS Mario Circuit, GameCube, Waluigi Stadium, which is an absolute banger, and the Tour Singapore Speedway. Plus, Birdo, who originally hit the starting line in Mario Kart Double Dash, is back revving up to join the racing roster with nine color options to choose from. You can race as Birdo and rack up some excellent wins on each of these courses as part of Wave 4. So yeah, all that stuff is available for you guys when it comes to the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Booster Course. And I think that this is gradually leading into what I think is coming next, and that is Mario Kart 9 probably for the next Nintendo Switch system. And I hate to keep on just bringing that up, but I think that it's finally leading into that. I think that'd be a banger launch title. But yeah, all these different Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Booster courses and all that, I'll be completely honest with you guys. Like, I'm tired of Mario Kart 8. It's something that I don't really play as much anymore, but because I played hundreds of hours on the Wii U and then more hundreds of hours on the Nintendo Switch. And while all these courses are great and I have the expansion pass, it's just a little bit too much for me. But I'll say this, for those that just got into it, which people are still buying Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, which is just nuts, but people are still buying that. I think that this is probably the most complete Mario Kart game they've probably ever played with all the different tracks. There's so much stuff to do. Obviously the online play is great as well. Tournaments and all that good stuff. So I think that it's awesome for the people who still love Mario Kart 8 Deluxe or who just got into it this generation with the Nintendo Switch. But let's go ahead and shift gears a little bit to a game that I discussed not too long ago, and it's called Cry Machina. It is a brand new game from publisher Furuyu and developer Aquaria, and it features some really interesting, like, mech, uh, droid, human design machines. Like, I like what they're going for here, and it looks incredible. We have the first gameplay from a recent live stream and also some new information on this game. This game's coming out this fall worldwide. It's actually out July 6th in Japan for PS4, PS5, and Nintendo Switch, but Later in the year, it's coming out for PS5, PS4, Nintendo Switch, and PC via Steam. So let's talk about some new information as you guys check out this new gameplay from the most recent live stream. So the concept of combat is exhilarating and cathartic battle. In addition to unleashing exhilarating combos while switching between close range and ranged attacks, you can get a taste of catharsis through perfect dodges and counters to parry enemy attacks. By defeating enemies, the player collects family machines, which float on the back of the character. There are over 70 different family machines, each with different appearances and performance, that can be swapped in different combinations on your left and right sides. You will also be able to equip strengthening items called sentiments, which will allow you to adjust your skills and stats to fit your strategy. Now, some humans retain human mental data called personality data, and by analyzing that data, you can obtain special items useful in combat, as well as story-related scenarios about the data. So, the interesting thing about this game is that humanity is completely extinct. 
eradicated, gone. And essentially, there's been a program put together that finds the essence or the souls of three or so different humans and infuses that into these machines in order to regain and bring back humanity so it's a very interesting concept i think that the gameplay looks awesome probably gonna be pretty fun to play on ps5 it looks like they're going for that double a rpg type of feel but i bet it'll be pretty good to put on switch to portable if you want to play it that way so i'm actually looking forward to this game really interesting kind of like devil may cry bayonetta style you know action rpg so i think that it's it's going to be solid when it does launch later this year but what do you guys think about all this different news here if you want to check out my most recent rpg news on the channel where we round up all the best rpg news and more check out the playlist on the main home page and of course make sure you subscribe hit that like button and check out more videos on the channel we've did all sorts of stuff we even talked about square enix and what's happening there so square enix going through some stuff as well so thank you guys so much for watching i appreciate it and we'll see you in the next video Peace.